All right, I'm starting the recording. And I'm sharing my screen. This will be homework two. And be appropriate this time. All right, I'm sharing my screen. And back to here. All right, so this is homework two this time. Make sure we get this thing working here. All right, where's the pencil? Seriously, the pencil's not going to want to work. I just charged that this morning. Okay, hold on. 85% on the pencil, so the pencil should be working. All right. Should be working. All right, let's hope you can hear me. All right. So when it says to rewrite without parentheses, notice all we're doing is we're taking this negative 8 v to the 6 and multiplying it into each one. All right, here we go. We got it working now. Into each one of these terms in the parentheses. And we're using the same exponent rules that we used before. Also remember, if there's no exponent, we know it's a 1. So a negative 8 times a negative 3 is a positive 24. V to the 6 times V cubed, that's 6 plus 3, that's V to the 9th. Now we're going to take the negative 8 V to the 6th and multiply it by the positive 6 V squared. I have my headset on, so if it's louder, you may need to turn it down. So negative 8 times positive 6 is a negative 48. And v to the 6th times v squared, yep, we're adding them, v to the 8th. Good. Think along with me. Again, if you have any questions, put them in the discussion in D2L. And earn points. Yay. So now we're going to multiply the negative 8 v to the 6th times the positive 2 v to the 1st. Negative 8 times a positive 2 is a negative 16. v to the 6th times v to the 1st. Again, add those together and you get v to the 7th. All right. Here, when well, this question two, it says multiply u minus three times u plus three and simplify your answer. That means combine like terms at the end. You might recognize this as being a search with a C. Conjugate. Conjugates, what happened is the first terms you use match, the threes match, and the signs are different. So what's going to happen is the middle term is going to go away. You might also remember that we do this with FOIL. All right. So we've got U minus 3. U plus 3. And the first thing we're going to do then is do the first ones. And then we will do the outside ones. And then we'll do the inside ones. Whoops, I'm going to run a room. And then we'll do the last ones. All right. Another way you can look at this is take each individual term in the first one. That first U times the second piece, U plus 3. And then the minus 3 in the first term. First set of parentheses, first factor, and multiply that by the u plus 3. You get the same answer. You get u squared plus 3u because you're just distributing the u. And distribute the negative 3 minus 3u minus 9. Combine like terms. That's the simplify part. And we have a positive 3u and a negative 3u, and those go to 0. So you're just left with a minus 9. U squared minus 9, we're going to eventually call this a difference of squares. And when we start turning things around in math and going backwards, as all math does, we will unfoil that by breaking it down into its two conjugate factors. All righty, math is our friend. 
For number, question number three, you'll notice you have the binomial squared. What you need to remember is this is actually a binomial times itself. Just like anything else you square, you multiply it by itself. So you could FOIL it or do what we did up, up there. Take the first U, distribute it through U times U minus six. Take the second U, I mean it's negative six, and distribute it through. I like this method better than a FOIL. FOIL's quick for binomials. If you have something that's not a binomial, you have a trinomial, there's no cute trick. And the trick is just to take each term in the first parentheses and multiply it by each term in the second parenthesis. So that's going to be u squared minus 6u. This one will be minus 6u plus 36. Watch out for that. Negative times a negative is positive. Combine the like terms. Now this time they don't go away because you have negative 6u and minus 6u, which give you a negative 12u. Remember if the signs are alike when you're adding, you keep the sign and add them. The signs are different. You subtract them and keep the sign of the larger one. This is actually called a perfect square trinomial, which will be useful when we start factoring. Perfect square trinomial. Now there is a shortcut to this. Some people like it, some people don't. I'm gonna show you the shortcut real quickly. Okay, I'm gonna do this in red, shortcut. And really, if you learn this shortcut, sometimes it's quicker, especially when you're going to higher math. You gotta be able to do this fast. I ask my students usually if they like kitty cats or bunnies, but since no one's here with me, it's going to be a kitty cat. You're going to square the first one. U squared. You're going to square the last one. Negative 6 times negative 6 is plus 36. Now you're going to multiply the first one times the second one, so it's U times negative 6, and multiply that by 2. So U times negative 6 is negative 6U times 2 is negative 12U which is the same answer that we got a minute ago. So you can make a cute little kitty cat, see the two ears, the nose and the mouth, and the U minus six was its eyes. Anyway, someone showed me that a few years back. Do with it what you want. The trick is to remember, if you're square in a binomial, you're square in the binomial by itself. Now, we've been multiplying. We're going to undo that multiplication. For some reason, we don't call it division. We call it factoring. Factoring simply is looking for what's in common in both terms. Remember, the 10a cubed is a term, and 15a squared is a term, or negative 15a squared. So we want to see what's in common. Look at the numbers first. So we look at the 10 and the 15, and we know that 2 and 5 will divide 10, 3 and 5 will divide 15. So what's in common? The 5. We look at a cubed and a squared. 2's are inside 3's, so a squared is what's in common. So basically, you're just taking this, what they call the greatest common factor, out. And you can just think of that as dividing that out of both terms. You saw that little battery thing pop up. Let's see if we can make this. So 10 divided by 5 is 2. A cubed divided by A squared, remember our exponent rules, that's just A. Minus 15 divided by 5 is 3. And the A squared divided by the A squared, well, those cancel out because they're the same. And that is how we factor out a GCF. Factor by grouping. The key here is grouping. And most of the time at this level, it's going to be grouping the first two with the last two. 
Now, it could be that you might group the first three sometimes, and that works somehow with the last one. It's grouping something, but right now it's usually the first two and the last two. You may see a few times where it's not. So what they're looking for basically is you want to find the GCF here between the first two and find a GCF between the last two. They don't have to be the same GCF. Well, five and seven, I automatically see there's nothing in common between five and seven. But between you, well, there's a one in common. When we say nothing, there's really a one in common. One divides everything at this level. So we have u cubed and u squared. So what's in common is the u squared. And remember, we can think about that as dividing the u squared out of 5u cubed and being left with 5u. Dividing the u squared out of the negative 7u squared just gives us negative 7. Now over here, we have that minus sign. So we're going to write that minus sign down. But we want to, don't want to forget it because we're actually factoring that minus sign out. Well, let's look at 30 and 42. 30 is 6 times 5. 42 is 6 times 7. So what's in common is the 6. 42 doesn't have a u, so there's no u's in common. And when you take a minus 30u and divide by the negative 6, you're left with a positive 5u. When you take the positive 42 and divide by the negative 6, you're left with a negative 7. Now, the great thing about grouping, when you group by 2's like this, what's in parentheses should match. You should always use equal signs, too. All right, what's in parentheses should match. So, just like we factored out the GCF of 5a squared, and we factored each individual GCF out, we factored out monomials. You can have matching binomials, and so you just factor out the matching binomial, and when you divide it out of the first term, the u squared is left, and when you divide it out of the second term, the minus 6 is left. Now, u squared minus 6 is nothing fancy, so we're just going to go ahead, and that's our answer. Here comes the fun part. All right, so we always want to look for the GCF first, the greatest common factor first. So we're looking at z squared plus z minus 20 for question number six. Trinomials most of the time will factor into two binomials. All right. You might remember something about the quadratics way back there. AX squared plus BX plus C. All right, so if C is positive. Our signs are B. B is signs. All right. So in this case, C is negative. Oh dear. If C is negative, the signs are one's going to be plus and one's going to be minus, but you don't know the order. All right. Okay. So z squared plus z minus 20. Remember, there's nothing in front. It's a 1 there. So go ahead and put those there when you need them. When the 1's in front, we have fun. We can just look at the c term. And we want the factors of C that, in this case, subtract to our positive 1. Well, we can look at factors of 20, and we say subtract because it's a minus sign. Okay. So we can look at the facts, because we know we're going to get 1 plus, and we're going to get 1 minus. We want to make z squared, so it's got to be z times z. See how we're undoing the trinomial and putting it back into two binomials again? We can actually foil this back out when we finish and make sure we have the correct answer. So it should be what we started with. That's how we check it. So anyways, 20 is five times, um, that's one times 20, but if you subtract those, you don't get 
1. It's also 5 times 4. And when you subtract those, you do get 1. 5 minus 4 is 1. You want a positive 1. So your 5's got to be positive to subtract the, neg subtract the 4 to get a positive 1. And you're done. Again, you can foil that back out or multiply that back out, however you please, to find out that you got what you started with. Now, question seven here, notice real quickly, remember to always look for that GCF first. All right, we got a 2V squared. We have a minus 22V plus 60. They're all even, right? They're all even. We know that 2 will factor into them. And since 2 is the smallest number, I can't go any higher than 2. There's no V on the 60, so I can't factor a V out. But when I divide this 2, I factored out. This GCF, I'm really dividing that into each one of these. 2V squared divided by 2 just leaves you V squared. Minus 22V divided by 2 leaves you 11V. And plus 60 divided by 2 is a positive 30. Now we're looking at a problem just like we just did in question number 6. In this case, 30 is positive. So we want the factors of 30 that are going to add, because 30 is positive, that are going to add to that negative 11. That, oops, hang on. I'm trying to talk and write at the same time. Add to a negative 11. But remember also over here, if C is positive, we're going to use B's sign. So don't forget your 2 out in front. That doesn't go away. That's part of the factors. Inside the parentheses, to get V squared, we need V and V. C is positive. 30 is positive, so we're going to use B's sign, which is 11, and that's negative. So the factors of 30 that add to 11. Well, we have 1 times 30, but that doesn't add to 11. And then we have, I believe it's 6 times 5, and that does add to 11. And you can multiply this whole thing back out to check it. Isn't this fun? Factoring is the key to all your math. Again, you can stop this, rewind it, and look at problems I've worked. All right, so question number 8. Now it's not so much fun anymore. You got that three in the A place. All the rest of them, we broke it down, we pulled out GCFs and all that good stuff. It got to one there. I hope that cord is not making a lot of noise. All right, so this makes it just a little bit different. Let me see how much room I can squeeze here. Now these rules up here about the signs are the same. All right. So for one, this is not one. When A, your leading coefficient is not one. You want the factors of A times C to add to B. All right. Well, A is 3, C is negative 2, and B is a positive 5. Sign matters. Okay. C is negative, right? 2 is negative, so we know we're going to have a, both sign, both kinds of signs. What we can do is go ahead and just write this over here. All right. Or not. All right. All righty. So, three times a negative two is a negative six. We want to look for the factors of that that are going to add to five. Well, if you do one times a negative six, that gives you a negative 5 when you add. We want a positive 5, so we're close. We want a negative 1 and a positive 6. That gives us our positive 5. Check. We're there. So we're going to use these two numbers. See, that was the first step. This one's going to take us down a while. Second step. Rewrite your original equation. I mean, exp sorry, expression using the two numbers you found in number one. 
So we've got a 3z squared. Instead of a plus 5z, though, we can say plus 6z minus 1z. It's okay to put that 1 there. Don't do it in the answer. But when you're working a problem, that helps see what we need to do. Because the plus 5z is that plus 6z minus 1. And then subtract the 2 off. So now we can use factoring by grouping to solve. So step three is use factoring by grouping to solve. Let's solve this problem up here. All righty. So we got to look at the first two. And the last two. Notice I put the 6 with the 3. I did that on purpose because I knew 3 divided 6. I knew I was going to be looking for the GCF. So between 3 and 6, it's a 3. Between Z squared and Z, it's a Z. So pulling out 3Z, or dividing out that 3Z, leaves us with a Z plus 2. Now when we look at the second part, we got that minus sign in the middle, so bring that down. It looks like there's nothing in common, but when there's nothing in common, remember there's a 1 in common. So that's going to leave us with z. We got a minus 2 factoring out a negative 1 gives us a positive 2. Remember, we want these to match. These parentheses must match. Then you can factor out the matching binomial or matching set of parentheses. When you factor out the first one, you're left with 3z. Factoring out the second one, you're left with the negative 1. And you can do the arithmetic and the foiling to make sure that is proper answer. Alrighty. Question number nine. You might notice, remember I pointed out the perfect square trinomial earlier? This is a perfect square trinomial. I'm just going to put perfect square tri. How's that? All right, perfect square trinomial. How do I know? Look at the first term. That's a 5. The square root of 25 is 5. Square root of w squared is w. The last term, square root of 36, is 6. This is positive. has to be positive. So we're going to put that sign in the middle there. Put parentheses around it and put a little square on the top of it as an exponent. Now, how do I know that this is true? Okay, well, let's just, just check it. Got to check it. We squared the root of each end. How do we get the middle? The middle is 2 times 5 times 6. So 5 times 6 is 30 times 2 is indeed 60. So it does check. Yes. All right. I got all that black on the right over there. I'm going to go ahead and make some more that are just blue. All right, so we got 25w squared minus 36. This is the difference of squares. Remember I mentioned that earlier? This breaks down into conjugates. How do I know it's a difference of squares? Well, one, we got a minus sign. That's a difference. The first is a perfect square. 5, 25 is, square root of 25 is 5. Square root of w squared is w. Some people like to go ahead and put the minus sign down first. Some people like to put the plus sign down first. It doesn't matter which order you put them in, as long as you get one of each. And square root of 36 is 6. Then it's going to be the conjugate. Remember, it's the same thing, except you just change the sign in the middle. We did those earlier, but we came the other way. Now, when it says factor completely, remember, we're always going to look for the GCF first. All right. We've got 28 and we've got 63. Remember our multiplication tables? That's 7 in common, right? 7 times 4 is 28. 7 times 9 is 63. There's no x on the 63, so there's no x's in common. So now we're factoring. Remember, it's a fancy word for division. 28x squared divided by 7 is going to give us 4x squared. And then minus 63 divided by 7 gives us 9. But it says factor completely, so watch out. Usually when it says that, there's something else to factor. Notice this piece is a difference of squares. So we're going to be in the conjugate again. 
So don't lose the seven you had out front. Square root of four, square root of nine. All right, so that's two X minus three. And the conjugate, two X plus three. Awesome. All right, we're almost there. Simplify each expression if possible. All righty. Remember that you can rearrange terms as long as you keep their signs with them. Yeah, well, that's an 8 plus 3u. So there's nothing here. We can't cancel across addition. We can only cancel when we have factors. This whole numerator must match the whole denominator, and it doesn't. The 8 in the denominator doesn't have a u on it. The 3 in the denominator has a u, but not in the numerator. So this one cannot be simplified. The next one, however, again, we can turn these around. So we can put the negative 6 here. That's a positive 5u. Some people like to go the other way. It doesn't really matter. But notice they're the same. Exactly same, 5u, 5u, 6, 6. The only thing difference is the signs. So if I leave the numerator alone, then again, you can work this with the numerator if you wanted to. And I factor a negative 1 out of the denominator. That gives me 6 minus 5u. So now this whole numerator and this piece, this part of the factor, this factor in the denominator, they match. They can cancel. That leaves us 1 over negative 1, which, of course, we know is negative 1. All right. If this, if, uh, well, if this kicks out, it's because I'm going to lose my battery power. I'm down to 6%, but I'm going to try to finish here. All right. So we're going to look at this. Simplifying these type of things, the first thing you have to do is factor. The best thing to do is go ahead and get them all in descending order, which means you get all the variables with the highest exponents first and write them down in proper order. Now, personally, I don't like leading negatives, so I'm going to factor out a negative 2 here. That's going to leave me y squared minus 32 divided by 2 is 16. Oh, but look, that's going to be a difference of squares. So that's negative 2, y minus 4, y plus 4. All right, that's the numerator. I don't like going, I don't like alternating back between numerator and denominator, numerator and denominator. I get confused. I work the numerator straight across, then I'll work the denominator straight across. All right. So I'm leading coefficients 1 on this one, so this one's going to be fun. I just need the factors of 8 that subtract to 2. So I'm going to have a y and a y. C is negative. 1's plus, 1's minus. Factors of 8 that subtract to 2 would be 4 times 2. But I need a negative 2. So the 4's got to be negative, And the 2's going to be positive. So we have y plus 2. Y minus 4. Okay, so we'll look and see what's in common. And y minus 4 is in common. We can cancel that out. And we're left with negative 2 times y plus 4 over y plus 2. All righty. Can I put this thing on pause? Let me see if I can pause something here. Because if I can pause, I'd rather do that. I should have checked the battery before I started this. All right. I don't see a pause. I don't see a pause. Okay. Hang on, let me go over here. Nope. Don't see a pause. Alrighty. Five percent. We'll see what we can do. We only got five more, six more questions. Okay. Again, when you're multiplying these things, it's the same idea. You got a factor. First numerator is already factored. First denominator needs factored. So again, you want this one, coefficient, leading coefficients 1. So we want the factors of 2 that add to 3. Well, that's just 2 and 1, right? C is positive, so we're just using B's sign. They're both positive. 
We got an X on them. Okay. Times. Notice there's a GCF in this. 3X plus 6. Yeah, it's going to be 3X plus 2. Over X minus 1. So the only thing that's in common to cancel is the X plus 2s. So this thing just ends up being 3. Always put your um, single digits first. Or single letters first. They're called monomials. And then just write down. You don't need to multiply the bottom out. You can just leave it like that. Now, division is the same way. Nothing has changed. Division is the same way. But what do we remember about division and fractions? Right, exactly. You have to flip the second one, all right? So I'm just going to rewrite this. 3x minus 3. Up, change it to multiplication. And we flip it, right? X squared plus X minus 2 over X squared minus X minus 2. Okay. So we just fact first numerator doesn't need factored. First denominator, we can factor out GCF. This is with 3 times x minus 1. Second numerator, leading coefficients is 1. So all we need is the factors of 2 that subtract to a positive 1. So that would be plus 2 minus 1. So we got x plus 2, x minus 1. In the denominator, we want the factors of 2 that subtract to a negative 1. So that's x minus 2 x plus 1. So the x plus 1's can cancel. The x minus 1's can cancel. Notice the whole binomial has to cancel in order for this to cancel. So the numerator is x plus 2, and the denominator is 3 times x minus 2. Alrighty, we're having fun. Okay. Find the least common denominator. Now this is really fun. Again, it involves factoring. But all you're looking at is denominators. So factor this one over here. Let me do that differently. Leading coefficient's one, so again, this is fun. You want the factors of 15 that subtract a negative two. So we've got x and x. C is negative, so one's positive, one's negative. Factors of 15, three and five will subtract a two. If you get a negative 2, you've got to have a negative 5. Negative 5 plus 3 gives you your negative 2. Oh, my gosh. I just saw how terrible this is going to be. All right, so difference of squares on the right-hand side. That's going to be square root of 64 is 8, so it's x plus 8. x minus 8, either way. And that whole thing, actually, is your least common denominator. Yeah, exciting, isn't it? Alrighty, so we want to subtract these in question 17, and that means we need a least common denominator. So, we need 2w squared, so 2w squared, there we go, but now we need this denominator to be in there. I've already got the 2, so if I multiply 2 times 3, I'll have a 6, and I've already got a W in there in that W squared. So 6W squared is our least common denominator. All right, so these are going to build to put 6W squared on the denominator. So to get from 2 to 6, we've got to multiply by 3. W squared is already there. So we're okay. But if I multiply the denominator by 3, I've got to multiply the numerator by 3. 3 times 3 is 9. In the second one, I've already got the 6, but this one only has a W to the first. This has a W squared, so I need to multiply that by a W in order to get W squared. And whatever I do in the denominator, I have to do in the numerator. Now we want to put this all over that 6W squared. So it's just simply 9 minus 7w. Remember, these are not like terms, so we can't do anything else. We are done. 
gets a little more exciting with the monomials. Uh, I mean binomials, sorry, those were monomials up there. These are binomials. All right, so what we do is we look for the, the common denominator. But what you want to do is you want to factor at whatever you can. Factoring is everything. We can factor a GCF of 6 out. X minus 4. Okay, so in the first denominator, we have 6 times X minus 4. In the second denominator, I need six, X minus 4 to be in my common denominator. X minus 4 is already in my common denominator. So all I do now is just need to build my fractions. So we put down the new denominator. We look and compare them with the original. So 6 times X minus 4, well, that was the original. So that means the denominator did not change. Therefore, the numerator won't change. We had X minus 4 in the second denominator. It became 6 times X minus 4. So I need to take that six minus, X minus 4 and multiply by 6. But whatever I do in the denominator, I got to do in the numerator. And 3 times 6 is 18. So it's now to combine them so they're all over the same denominator, 19 plus 18, I hope is 37. You guys can check that. One last one for homework two. You guys can put your um, questions in the discussion in D2L. All right, so we need to find the least common denominator again. But notice these, notice them, look. Look with your eyes. They both have a 9x and they both have a 4. The only difference is one of the one's negative, one's positive. They're backwards. So in the first one, we're going to factor out that negative. And when we factor it out, we're going to actually put it in the numerator and get 9x minus 4. So the negative I factored out of the first one. I factor a negative out, I get negative 4 plus 9x which is that right there. So we got 7x over 9x minus 4. Negative x, remember there's a 1 there, so that's going to be 6x over 9x minus 4. Remember we have to match the whole binomial if we want to cancel anything, so we can't do that, so it is finished. And that is the end of homework 2. Hence, so I'm going to stop my recording.